clear between different languages. Деякі емоції можуть ну не достатньо добре перекладатися з однієї мови на іншу. But you get the general idea. Але тим не менше ви зрозуміли, в чому полягає суть. Our psychiatrist, psychologist tells we have four basic emotions as human beings. Наші психологи, психіатри говорять, що у нас є чотири основні емоції, як у людей. Mad. Це розмиваний. Sad. Судний. Glad. Радий. Afraid. You can't make them rhyme in English, but you always can. It helps you remember. Bad. Which is? Well, at least you don't mind the movies. The basics. The basics. The problem is that if we're trying to learn to name our emotions correctly. But we just make a bunch of our negative emotions into anger. Ми дуже дуже часто наші негативні емоції спрямовуємо у гнів. Then we're trying to manage our anger when really it's something else. І тоді намагаємося дати раду гніву, коли насправді це інша емоція. So this is just the first step. Тому це лише перший крок. Of growing in my emotional maturity. До того, щоб зростати у свої емоційні зрілості. Is to learn to name my own emotions well. Власне, цей перший крок полягає в тому, щоб назвати правильно ці емоції. And this is the emotional set that most kids mislabel. We just label all of these things as anger. І велике спотворення в тому, що власне ми багато з цих емоцій просто на них чіпаємо і ярлик. And so we're trying to not sin in our anger when really perhaps we should be allowing ourselves to feel sad and to cry. And we know how we should not hide the emotion of anger, which on the surface we are not very good at sympathizing and laughing. To manage my sorrow and my sadness is very different from managing anger. Because to give advice to me is very different from managing anger. So we have to give advice to the other side. So that's the idea of this tool, simply to give us a help to name emotions better, and then to talk about how do we work with these in a redemptive way. So this exercise polegaje lše u tomu, što nazvati ti emocije, ki mi vidčujemo, i ti ti dati radu, ti ti dati im radu vidku. If I'm very sad. Then I look for comfort from the Lord and from His people. If so, for example, I'm feeling a little sad, then I should be looking for comfort from God and from His people. But if I'm just trying to manage my anger, I won't be seeking comfort. But if so, I'm just trying to manage my anger, I won't be seeking comfort. But if so, I'm just trying to manage my anger, I won't be Тобто не можна, якщо ми намагаємося впоратися з сумом, тобто є певний шлях, як впоратися з сумом, і не потрібно вкладати його, коли ми відчуваємо гід. Чи є запитання стосовно цього чи коментарі? So the first thing you can do is realize that you're having a big emotion. Perhaps I've said to you, "Should we not celebrate it? It's so important that we have a big emotion." And then name it. We need to call it. So they tell us that if we can name it well, we have half solved working with that emotion. We've brought it half under control. Кажуть, що якщо ми зможемо назвати цю емоцію, то ми вже зробили половину праці, щоб дати її раду. The emotion itself is not simple. It's what we do with it. Emotion, as a matter of fact, is not the calm. It's the calm, rather, is the best thing we do with it. Does the emotion cause me to realize that there's work for me to do? Does the emotion cause me to realize that there's work for me to do? Does the emotion cause me to realize that there's work for me to do? Does the emotion cause me to realize that there's work for me to do? Does the emotion cause me to realize that there's work for me to do? Does the emotion cause me to realize that there's work for me to do? Does the emotion cause me to realize that there's work for me to do? Does the emotion cause me to realize that there's work for me to do? 
чи говорить мені ця емоція про певну інформацію, через яку я буду знати, як виходитися далі. This is the idea. And again, it's just one frame of one window. В тому полягає ідея, і це, власне, лише одне вікно. But the phrase that in leadership particularly we most ignore. Але дуже часто у своєму лідерстві ми ігноруємо це. Short story, for example. Хочу навести коротку історію. When I was working on this with my children, коли я працювала з засобом зі своїми дітьми, had it on the refrigerator. Це картинка висіла мене на холодильнику. So that when we were really angry, we actually had a physical place we could go, and then we could try to name why we were angry. Щоб і коли ми гнівалися, то ми фізично рухалися до холодильника і намагалися назвати, яка це емоція. This was very redemptive work because now we're actually trying to learn together, even while someone's having a temper tantrum. Це була така відкупна праця, тому що навіть, зважаючи на те, що в когось був спала люті, ми намагалися працювати над вирішенням. Це також виявляло велику повагу до людини, в якої з'явилася емоція. Тому що такий підхід говорить, що ми намагаємося зрозуміти, що ж ти відчуваєш. Oh, okay, mommy, you are angry because really you're sad. It's okay, mommy, you can cry. Тож, мамо, ти насправді гніваєшся, тому що тобі сумно. Це гаразд, ти можеш плакати. I grew up in a family where it was not okay to have emotions, and we certainly did not cry in front of each other. Я виросла в сім'ї, де не було прийнято плакати, і ніхто не плакав один перед одним. So you see, this was very redemptive work to do together. Тому нам потрібно було звершувати цю відкупну працю, Now the next day, maybe I'm at a meeting at work. And I'm very, feeling very angry about the decision being made at the meeting. Hopefully, in God's grace, the practice work I did the day before in the kitchen та практична робота, яку я зробила за день до того в кухні, допоможе мені зрозуміти, що я сиджу на цій зустрічі, я відчуваю гнів. Тому, напевно, мені потрібно трошечки побути на самоті, щоб усвідомити свій емоційний стан, What's behind my anger? І запитати себе, що стоїть за моїм гнівом. So then when I communicate to the group at the meeting, тоді, якщо я буду, тоді, коли я буду говорити до людей на цій зустрічі, I actually have real data to communicate. Maybe I'm actually sad about something, and it would be good for them to realize why I am sad. То я буду їм говорити правдиву інформацію, можливо, я сумую через щось, і тоді вони будуть мене краще розуміти, коли знатимуть, що я сумую через щось. Чи є ще думки чи запитання? Yes, please. You see, there are three tools on naming emotions. Так, ви бачите, є три засоби, щоб назвати свої емоції. None of them are complete. І жодне з них не є повним. But a tool, again, is just a tool. Але звісно, засіб це просто засіб. It can help us grow in reflection and self-awareness. Він може допомогти нам зростати у роздумах і самоусвідомленні. The research on emotional intelligence tells us we must work it for ourselves first. Дослідження у сфері емоційного інтелекту говорить, що нам потрібно застосовувати, потрібно працювати над цим в першу чергу у своєму житті. As we get good at naming our own emotions and managing them, і коли ми зможемо добре називати свої власні емоції, then we will get better at understanding somebody else's emotion and responding well. Тоді ми зможемо краще пізнавати емоції інших і таким чином краще на них реагувати. 
This is why I gave you three different tools. So for our pastors, we would put them in quiet time with the Lord for half an hour and ten minutes they had to spend just on how are they feeling today. This is the pastors in the research. And they found that that time of focusing on what are their emotions, how are they feeling about things, that time was very important in their growth, in their relationship with God and other people. They didn't like the work at first. They knew they were just trying it to see how it would go for them based on Research. But then afterwards they told me it was so very important. They, helped, they thought it helped them grow very much in maturity in Christ. So that's why we spent time, extra time here on this square. Okay, so coffee is ready. We will see you at 3 o'clock. So, how's our self-care going? Jak se špikovanie pro sebe? Uspíšno prešlo? Okay, we have a couple more things to do with our house. Okay, we have a couple more things to do with our house. One is we want to look at the house and ask a question that's not on your sheet. Uh, what's uh, 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 we want to ask ourselves, a big room of, of Christian leaders, uh, what helps us grow towards maturity in Christ? We want to ask ourselves, a big room of Christian leaders, what helps us grow towards maturity in Christ? Or in the U.S., so often people will say, what helps us to grow spiritually? And in the US, we actually get ourselves in trouble by using this word spiritual. We use it so much that it becomes meaningless. As if there was a spiritual Tasha separated as a person. So let's just throw all that if we can and think a few things in each area that we say, hey, these are basics to the Christian life that help us grow spiritually. Let's try to 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 try Let's name some of the obvious things and think, where are they, where do we see them the most? Okay, let's start with the most obvious one. Let's start with the most obvious one. Let's start with the most obvious one. So to help us grow spiritually in Christ, we want to get a, a will to be open and honest. Maybe with God and, and other people. Uh, and perhaps also we could even make that open and honest with ourselves. That's the emotional work peace uh, how do we how do we do peace is that something we can do to help ourselves grow okay 
okay? Huh? Taking care of yourself, and I want to go back to peace. This idea of actually we can practice being at peace, right? I can take a position of peacefulness uh, during uh, when I'm practicing prayer, for example. I can try to be in a position of rest. Uh, or uh, try to uh, make my emotions calm down with deep breathing. And then perhaps I pray to God, so I'm doing communication and working uh, to relate to God. And that helps me grow spiritually. Right. So if we do something to help ourselves be healthy here, it can help us experience peace here, our uh, sense of emotion. And that would be growth towards maturity. It's interesting, the Apostle Paul commands us to let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. So that's a lot of act of faith, a lot of action on our part to obey that commandment. So it's interesting to me as an American that you went to very challenging places as parts of growing in spiritual maturity. You didn't jump to the first place Americans go. But they also get stuck. They say, oh, spiritual growth, growing toward maturity in Christ. That means time in the Bible, time in prayer, go to church. And then they act like nothing else has anything to do with being mature in Christ. Those three things are very good. They are very important. We are commanded to do these things. But they aren't little boxes to check off and say done. And now I go on with the rest of my life as if. Uh, and I can What else can we name? Things that we know help us grow. What are things you want people you're working with to be doing? Что бы вы хотели, чтобы люди, с якими вы працюєте у служінні, робили у щоденному житті? Але зростали, робити що? Physical action most of the time. And communicating of grace and truth. Yeah, even if they're uh, just seeing what it's like to uh, make coffee uh, for a group meeting, that is still service to the body. It still can be growing towards maturity. 
просто завалюють каву для групи, це все одно піклування про інших, і так тим чином вони також можуть зростати у кісті. Я думаю, что многие вещи, они могут быть присущи другим религиям, эти хорошие внешние такие вещи, и рост, и бить, и заботу, и поэтому, мне кажется, большое значение здесь имеет Right. So can you think of ways to help people grow in motivation and values? That's a hard question. Yeah. 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 So one interesting way is, uh, say for example, uh, I have a group of teenagers and we are going to go, um, this is common in my city, raise lawns for the poor people. We meet some people from the group of people, and we meet some people from the group of people, and we meet some people from the group of people, and we meet some Uh, this is a common ministry for our teams. Uh, we have many, many very big trees with big leaves. So they call this break and run. And they call this Will come, you know, suddenly appear in the neighborhood, break, 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 yeah. Now, physically, that might be good active service. Or they might be there because they want to just be with their friends. And that might be okay, it depends how they're interacting with their friends, right? І це нормально, це може бути нормальним, як залежно від того, як вони ставляться до друзів. But if I'm the youth leader, I must be very concerned about their motivation. Але якщо я є служитель, я лідером служіння є такого, то я маю впевнитися по їх мотивацію. So how do I help them grow in their motivation? Чому вони прийшли сюди? І, власне, як мені допомогти їм зрости у правильній мотивації? Right, so we go back to creating that learning space, structure, challenge, support. Отже, ми повертаємося до того, створення навчального простору, пам'ятаєте, структура, підтримка і виклик. I want to create a space where we're going to work on motivation. Я хочу створити простір, де ми будемо працювати над мотивацією. So I will bring the question, okay, what is motivating us to show up Saturday morning? І я хочу поставити звідти запитання, що мотивує нас з'явитися тут у суботу вранці. Perhaps I'll ask them today, let's make a big list of all the reasons we can think of to come. Наприклад, ми можемо сказати, напишіть, будь ласка, список причин, через які ми приходимо. And then I have a passage of scripture ready, and we're going to read that passage of scripture. І тоді ми можемо прочитати, наприклад, уривок з писання. And that passage talks to us about how God motivates us because he loved us first, therefore we love others. І в уривку йде мова про те, що Бог мотивує нас, тому що він полюбив нас перше, And so we, then we can go back to our list and, and talk about how many of these can come out of the fact that we are very loved by God. And we will find that many of these motivations are actually us trying to suck love out of other people and things. Через це ми можемо побачити, що багато з тих причин насправді не є воєвом любові, а способом витягнути любов від інших. Тоді ми можемо попрактикуватися, читаючи більше уривків про Божу любов до нас. And now let's remember, maybe we have a verse we will remember as we are breaking these. And then maybe we get back together after we break leaves and we say, how did it go? What happened in our emotions and our motivations? 
So that's how I, I think when I use structure challenge support and then I use the house. Ja tak se budu i proces zasip strukture i trenki i vekliku i vlastne proilustraciju do. So the house tells me, oh boy, I see my teenagers are showing up, but their motivations are very bad. Naprijed od ilustracija s budetkom govori mi nešto tak, vidjetke prešle na projekt, ali po budetku je možno stanati što ih je motivacija i je nepravljena. So I give us a space and challenge to work on motivation. To mu ja stvoriju s prostir, da ti daju vrklik što popracivate na cijelju motivaciju. And remember, we don't expect perfection, we allow failure and try again. I pametajte što mi ne vemahajemo, ne povinni vemahate doskonalosti, mi povinni dopuskate nedači i probale, i što ljudi probali znovu i znovu. So that was a long story on your point. Dobra, dobra story, ali slušna za uvažnje. Other ideas, are you coming up with other ideas of things that we do intentionally to grow in Christ? Štejk iz druge, če je reči, ki bi možemo nam mesno robiti, što zrastate v Kristi? Yes, read, pray, Bible groups, very important, very powerful for us. Very much so. So often we are just gathering our people to try something new. Duže často tak, duže často mi spravimo že nešto, ko ne pokrobali što se nove, što se im ne vidome. And in trying something new, where they are communicating, they are physically involved. Zelo je v tom, što oni govori, v tom, što oni vjeve fizično. We are doing something that is good, healthy. Da oni obravi rišenje, obravi što je dobro, što je zdorove. Just the newness is the challenge. And so can we create structure and support to go with that new thing we're doing together so that we actually learn from it? So when we try something new with our people, remember this is a powerful learning opportunity. So sometimes it's not just a Bible study that can be very powerful, but like it might be just a new but never just the challenge of newness. Because again, that will collapse the learning space. So try something new with your people. But then bring them together to talk about what happened. How did we feel about it? And if they know they're going to get back together after this new experience, then you've given that structure as well. To, to do uh, a lawn care for a poor neighborhood could be a very new, scary experience for a teenager. Uh, 
just as an example. So you want structure. You want they want to know when it starts, when it ends, and that you're going to get back together afterwards and talk about what happened and how it felt. So you correctly, but also correctly, you want to have structure so that they know when it starts. Ці вчинки на озерці, чи коли вони закінчаться, і важливо знати, що вони після цього матимуть час на обговорення того, що відбулося. So that is a learning space. Тому це знову ж таки цей такий процес. They didn't just rake lawns all day and then feel like their youth group works them too hard. Це не просто, що вони згрібали це листя весь день, і потім мають відчуття, що їх просто, їхній лідер служіння використовує як робочу силу. I'm so glad you brought this idea. Just our new experiences Yes. So uh, leaders in ministry can they lead learning? Чи можуть вони вести людей на той час, що навчаючись? Звісно, що ми хочемо, щоб люди знали Господа і вчинили Господа. Але також потрібно питати, чи навчаються вони також бути добрими лідерами. Because I actually had a youth group leader that I knew that took the kids for break and run. Бо знаю такого одного лідера, який, власне, організовував цю акцію, де вони прибирали газони від листя. He did not brief the kids by explaining and working on things before they went. Він не пояснив відвідкам, власне, чому вони це робили до початку праці. And he didn't meet with them afterwards to see how the experience impacted them. І він також не зустрічався з ними, вони не мали часу після того, як завершили роботу, щоб поговорити. So one of the sets... So one of the sons came home that night. He would then speak with you, perhaps to the dorm room, actually. A son of a friend of mine. It's about the same among among the other. He said to his mother, "I hate you, Scoop. I'm never going again." He said to his mother, "I'm never going again." He said to his mother, "I'm never going again." He said to his mother, "I'm never going again." He said to his mother, "I'm never going again." He said to his mother, "I'm never going again." Нарякалася, коли вони згрібали листя з її газону. And she actually cursed at them and threw trash at them. І вона їх там обмотікала і сміття на них викидала. They didn't know what to do with this experience. The learning space collapsed. Вони не знали, що робити в такій ситуації, і той навчальний простір, він просто рухнув. It could have been an amazing learning experience. Це могло би бути дуже чудовим простором для навчання. The challenge needed structure and support. То і виклик, який вони мали, потребував і структури, і підтримки. But we can see that even raking lawns, which just sounds like physical work. Але ми можемо бачити, як просте зрівання листя, яке виглядає просто як фізична праця, can be something that helps us grow towards maturity in Christ. Може бути тим, що, власне, допомагає нам зростати в листі. So this is why I hope the house helps us to think about all the things that we do with our people, how they can help us grow. Тому я надіюся, що ця ілюстрація будинку пояснює нам, як ми можемо допомагати іншим людям зростати в листі. We love our Bible studies, our prayer, our worship. Безумовно, ми всі любимо молитву, наші прославлення, біблійні групи. But we cannot ignore the rest of our lives. Але ми не можемо ігнорувати, нехтувати решту життя. We're all in. Тому що ми є суцільними, цілісними особистими. Including our sleep. В тому числі, і це стосується нашого сну. As an act of faith in trusting God that we can lie down to sleep. Це так само, як і дія віри, що ми можемо заснути вірою. Одне і друге є кроком до духовної звілості. Можна ще вопрос? Ось це ось все. Я просто хочу перейти на уровень сім'ї, тому що ми вам зрозуміли лідери в сім'ї теж. Є ще якісь то следи. Слава Богу, я забыл Надо почаще войдет. 
Есть ли ответственность по, тому, по, по вопросу, какие дети, что, какие дети верующих родителей уходят из церкви, да? вот какие оставались, какие уходят? Это зависит от атмосферы в семье, это зависит от чего это зависит, на что обращать нам внимание, как родителям Или даже лидерам на простом Yes, this is a, a crisis right now in the U.S. that uh, uh, children who grew in the church tend to leave. <laughs> yeah. uh, the issue is very complex. <laughs> But there is good research that tells us as a church that we need to do things differently with our young people. <laughs> проводити служіння з нашими з нашою молоді, з нашими дітьми. We need to involve them much sooner in the adult work of service in the church. Що їх потрібно залучати до дорослого служіння набагато раніше. Again, with support. Свідчно надаючи підтримку, надаючи структуру. So that they are growing in feeling a part, a full part of the body of Christ. Для того, щоб вони зростали з розумінням, що вони є повноцінною частиною тіла Христового. Even at a young age. Навіть з раннього віку. So one uh, example of this type of work. І одним з прикладів такої роботи. A kindergarten class of five and six year olds. Є такий, уявіть собі садок, дитячий, де там є п'яти, шестирічні діти. They can well practice how to greet each other on Sunday morning. Вони можуть добре практикуватися в тому, як вітати один одного під час служіння. When they are good at that, якщо вони добре, якщо їм добре вдасться вітати, then they can practice greeting adults well on Sunday morning. То вони зможуть, якщо вони зможуть навчитися вітати один одного, тоді вони зможуть навчитися вітати і дорослих. If they are good at that, then they can actually be some of the greeters, we call them, Uh, at our doors of the church. So instead of just making our preachers the elders in the church, you can have families that are preachers for the day. And the children know how to greet anyone that comes in. And the adults і старші, they all get to wear a little badge saying, I'm glad you're here today or something. Дай чи ти їм доказати раді, що ви прийшли? This is being part of the body of Christ. Це все означає бути частиною тіла Христового. We don't have to wait until those children are 40-50 years old to be Треба чекати, поки ті діти досягнуть 40 річного віку, щоб повісити на них цю відповідальність. That is one uh, finding of the research. Uh, Чи є потреба комісія щоб психологом, чи просто це можна розкласти на лідерів? Стосовно іменно виховання, стосовно зростання. The research that I'm most familiar with talks to the whole of the church in giving reasons why our young people have left the church and what would most help them come back. У дослідженні, власне, з яким я мала свою справу, йшла мова про Тобто то всі ці речі стосувалися цілої церкви, як допомогти людям вас залишатися в церкві. Тобто воно стосувалося цієї церкви. Я думаю, що вони могли б бути доволі помічними в цьому процесі. Так, в культурі США доволі поширене розлучення і розірвані сім'ї. Тому християнські психологи можуть бути чудовим засобом, щоб допомогти зцілювати людей. 
Yeah. And so we have many, many children that need to feel uh, that there are, are that they have many moms and dads in the congregation uh, that are for them. The Bahá'u'lláh did that. If you forget to do the service, the Bahá'u'lláh man will kill who is the one who took me. Uh, one of the most valuable things for our young people, our teenagers, uh, young twenties, uh, is to have other adults who are mentoring them. A duże cennym jest, że dzieci mają innych dorosłych, którzy nastawiają ich. Other adults who are not parenting them, but that are encouraging them. Inni dorośli, którzy nie byli ich niby rodzicami, ale którzy inwadiowali ich. I think it takes a church to raise a teenager well. Zdaje się, że dla tego, żeby wychować ich dziecko dobrze, potrzebne jest cel. And so your emphasis on youth ministry uh, with mature young adults to love on those teenagers is a very good thing. As a teenager now, they have a brain that can ask the adult questions that they could not ask as a child. Це запитання вони не могли поставити в дитячому віці. Тепер вони вже отримують абстрактне мислення. Тобто виходить таке, що їм зовсім по-новому потрібно побачити писання і свою віру. Тому що їхній дитячий розум не зможе відповісти на їхні підліткові запитання. So they bring big questions, and they need lots of patient adults to help them work the answers. These are big questions, Fox. Okay, to wrap up, I just want to point to the two questions that we have not worked on. Щоб підсумувати, я хочу задати про два запитання, над якими ми не розмовували. So I leave these as uh, challenges for you to consider or to work on uh, with other friends in the church. А ці я даю вам як виклики, які ви зможете, які ви можете на які ви зможете дати відповідь серед своїх друзів чи церкви. Under the house, we have the question number two. What might self-stewardship look like for me in each area to bring out the best that God has given me? Може, запитання це друге. Як може виглядати підкування про себе у кожній сфері, щоб виявити найкраще в мені з того, що дав мені Бог? Yeah, it's a hard question to answer. And I think one worth time in a week. Це важко відповісти на це запитання. To work on it every year to come back and reconsider. To plan to do it for Because some things we we try uh, in our life for a while and it helps us for a while and it doesn't help. Because some people have tried to do it for a while and it doesn't help. And then to point out question number one and question number two, ask for positives, ask for ideas. І знову ж таки хочу нагадати, що це запитання номер один і номер два, воно стосувалося позитивних речей, які, власне, допомагають нам стати, тобто, свого роду такий ідеал. Отже, відповіді на ці запитання є своєрідним великим викликом для нас. Тому є запитання номер три. What prevents me from pursuing these ideas? Отже, що перешкоджає мені досягати цих ідей, цих вимог? Стосовно питання один і два. So it could be, what are the barriers? What makes it hard for me to learn towards some of these things I listed? Є, які є перешкоди, які запобігають, щоб я дізнавався, щоб я зростав через ті речі, які ми, власне, назвали для тих людей. And I, I find for myself usually there's just one thing I feel God really pushing on me to pursue and work on. Ah, so the time I watch is to walk, watch is to be able to see how it goes for noy, family reaction. And it's enough to have that one thing. It's enough to have that one thing. 
Let's see, now we have announcements. Yay! 